When a new story starts with a tweet from Trump, you can't be too surprised these days. But when the tweet itself is about Twitter and other social media sites, that's when things start getting a bit more intriguing. On Wednesday, the president tweeted, Big Tech is doing everything in their considerable power to censor in advance of the 2020 election. If that happens, we no longer have our freedom. I will never let it happen. They tried so hard in 2016 and lost. Now they're going absolutely crazy. Stay tuned. In this video, we're going to discuss the censorship that Trump is accusing the social media giants of conducting, why these sites are going crazy, and what Trump plans to do about it. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to TLDR News US to get simple explanations of all of the biggest news. The issue of freedom of speech online is a topic which has been discussed at length, with strongly held opinions on both sides of the debate. But as I said, this is an issue that's been bubbling under the surface for a while now. So what made the issue suddenly explode? Well, it seems the whole thing started when Twitter started fact-checking Trump's tweets for the very first time. This is part of a wider system across Twitter, something that sites like Facebook and YouTube have integrated for a while now. And it applies to all Twitter users, not just Trump. So he's not intentionally being singled out here. But it seems that Trump was very unhappy with this change, something that he made clear in his initial tweets at the start of the controversy. At Twitter is now interfering with the 2020 presidential election. They are saying my statement on mail-in ballots, which will lead to massive corruption and fraud, is incorrect, based on fact-checking by fake news CNN and the Amazon Washington Post. Twitter is completely stifling free speech, and I, as president, will not allow it to happen. As the president just alluded to, the initial tweet was all about mail-in ballots, with the president claiming that mail-in ballots are more susceptible to voter fraud. Under the tweet, you'll find a fact-checking message encouraging people to get the facts about mail-in ballots, with the link taking users to a page explaining the facts. On that page, Twitter highlights three major issues with the president's tweet. The first is his assertion that mail-in ballots would lead to a rigged election, and there's absolutely no evidence to back up this assertion, with evidence from states already using the system showing that mail-in ballots are only fractionally more likely to be tampered with. In fact, for perspective, more than 100 million mail-in ballots have been sent out by Oregon since 2000, and there have only been a dozen cases of voter fraud, so it's not exactly a widespread issue. And that margin of error absolutely does not invalidate a whole election. Trump also claimed that California was sending out ballots to everyone, no matter who they are or how they got there, something which is wholly untrue, as only registered voters are being sent ballots. Thirdly, he overlooks that five states are already exclusively using mail-in voting, and the fact that all states offer mail-in absentee voting in some form. So, with those three caveats, Twitter felt it was necessary to correct the president's remarks, especially in these areas where the tweet was objectively untrue and misleading. Twitter remarked on the decision, commenting, we added a label to two at real Donald Trump tweets about California's vote by mail plan as part of our effort to enforce our civic integrity policy. We believe that those tweets could confuse voters about what they need to do to receive a ballot and participate in the election process. Jack Dorsey, Twitter's founder, went on to say that they were concerned that the claims related to California's voting system may encourage some people not to register to vote if they believed Trump's assertion that everyone was being sent ballots regardless of registration status. From TLDR's perspective, we're not saying that Trump's tweet is uniquely misleading, or that he was wrong that there are challenges with mail-in voting. There certainly does need to be more dialogue around how the 2020 election should be run, but that should be based on facts and the reality of the situation, not on partisan fighting or on attempts to suppress voters. Regardless, Trump was clearly unhappy with the decision and annoyed that his tweet had been fact-checked, with him continuing to rail against the social network in the following hours, promising that big things were coming, including a new executive order. Before we discuss that though, there's a few things we need to address about social networks. Firstly, I think we should handle the claim made by Trump and his supporters that Twitter was censoring him or limiting his free speech. It should be made absolutely clear at this point that Twitter did not remove Trump's tweets, suppress them in the algorithm, or affect them in any material way. Trump was and is entitled to speak his mind on Twitter. The company merely decided to caveat his message with a fact check, something that other social networks have been doing for a while now. 
Also, to be fair to Twitter, the clarifications they made were related to objectively incorrect statements. Twitter isn't exactly editorialising or nitpicking here, they're merely correcting falsehoods. Secondly, the First Amendment and the right to free speech don't apply in this situation, as some are claiming. The First Amendment of the US Constitution famously grants citizens protection from censorship, guaranteeing them the right to free speech. However, the First Amendment only applies to governmental actors, federal, state and local. This means that private companies, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and the rest, have the right to apply their own rules in line with their terms of service and user agreements, and as such, they are able to take down content without violating the Constitution. Some, including the American Bar Association, do argue that this should be changed, but as it stands, this isn't an argument that sites like Twitter need to worry about. Thirdly, it's worth discussing the conversation surrounding Section 230. This text, part of the Communications Decency Act, sets out the responsibilities that sites like Facebook and Twitter hold. It's an oft-discussed topic, but it's also one that's regularly misunderstood. Section 230, while only 26 words long, fundamentally changed how the internet operates. It says, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. This essentially means if you post something illegal or in another way problematic on Twitter, it's your problem and not Twitter's. But this doesn't just apply to social networks. The same section allows for the existence of sites like Wikipedia, which rely on work for contributors, or even reviews on Amazon products, or the comments underneath recipes on cooking sites. Any time that you post online, that's made possible by Section 230. Without the act in place, the site's owners will be responsible for what you said, making any social network or collaborative website essentially impossible. Without huge armies of moderators checking every single post manually before allowing it to go online, in order to avoid constant lawsuits. So ultimately the question that needs to be asked is what role should social media platforms play in moderating their own service? So what's Trump's answer? What does his executive order do? Well, remember the section 230 protections I mentioned a moment ago? Trump's executive order is attempting to limit those protections. With the president saying, that's a big deal, they have a shield, they can do what they want, they're not going to have that shield. Under his plan, Trump asks the FCC to draft regulations clarifying when a company forfeits its Section 230 protections, and also asks the commission to bring lawsuits against any firms that aren't neutral. The executive order does not only attempt to roll back protections, but it also sends complaints about platform neutrality to the FTC, who in turn will investigate the social networks to ensure they meet standards of neutrality. However, the FTC and FCC are independent agencies, and therefore the president cannot compel them to do any of this. The bigger problem with changes like this lies in the First Amendment, You'll remember from what I said moments ago that the rules set out in the Constitution don't come into play in this issue, because Twitter and other social networks are private companies, and that's absolutely right. The thing is that the whole equation changes when the government starts getting involved. The First Amendment explicitly prevents the government from limiting free speech, so if the government is about to start telling private companies like Twitter how to regulate speech, then they could have real problems on their hands. Problems could also emerge when the FCC tries to implement these regulations, with it very possible that courts could rule that the government is attempting to limit free speech, and thus violating constitutional rights. Jessica Rosenworcel, an FCC commissioner, commented, An executive order that would turn the Federal Communications Commission into the President's speech police is not the answer. That's because courts have long sided with tech companies on this issue, upholding their immunity. That's why Kate Kolnick, a law professor at St. John's University, told the New York Times, it's unclear what to make of this, because to a certain extent, you can't just issue an executive order and overturn on a whim 25 years of judicial precedent about how a law is interpreted. Also, the decision could come back to bite the president himself. Section 230 protects the social networks, which in turn allows them to be more relaxed about what you post on the platform.
Without the protections, companies will likely get more cautious, and you could see them taking down more false and defamatory posts to prevent lawsuits. Considering that the president described a fact check as censorship, he will be even less happy if Twitter start actually taking down his tweets for inaccuracies. If you're interested in this topic, be sure to check out the video we made on Facebook censorship policy. In reaction to claims that Facebook was silencing free speech, the company has set up an independent court of sorts to regulate what's allowed on the platform. To find out more about what people are calling the Supreme Court of Facebook, check out the link in the description. If you want more from us, be sure to subscribe to TLDR US and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release videos. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.